spending 19 years in one of the vaults can soften you. You might be handed stable life on a platter down underground, but everything is a do-or-die circumstance in the capital wasteland. From the very beginning, you're thrown headfirst into the fire, and expected to find all the secrets to how the game works without any help. Let's remember a few of the scariest places you may have visited. There's always the chance that the theme of nuclear warfare may have bypassed a few players, so the ruins of Springvale Elementary serve as an early reminder of what exactly you signed up for. It's one of the first explorable buildings in the Capital Wasteland, and it's one hell of a location to start out with. A couple centuries came and went since the Great War, and raiders decided to take advantage of the decrepit school and finally move in and conquer their territory after much delay. Now a ground of torture and savagery, evidenced by hanging mutilated corpses that decorate the empty spaces of the building. Be observant on your way through, and you'll find a couple rooms that can remind you of the innocence behind the school you're actually exploring. Congress's official house of knowledge, the Arlington Library is one of the few buildings that remain unscathed and without much wear and tear after the war. The Brotherhood of Steel has a firm lock on the building, but some raiders still manage to sneak through, even if they do end up getting exterminated. You're greeted by a character with unclear intentions of gathering pre-war books to safely stash away in the many shelves of the library, and that's when the dark history of the building starts to become a bit more obvious. Almost all of the books inside the facility have been vandalized, burned and charred to the point of illegibility. The library is also surrounded by Talon Company outposts and other oppositions. The longer you're in the building, the more it begins to settle in that all is not safe. Without the Mothership Zeta DLC, this one might be a little harder to find. The MDPL-13 crash site emits a thick pillar of smoke from its origin. It's safe to observe, but any closer to the ship than you need to be will result in a cutscene and a teleportation to the mother ship. This will only happen if you have the DLC, but the wreckage itself can still be explored without it. The pilot lays dead on the ground, ejected violently from the windshield. Inside the ship is an alien blaster and quite a sizable amount of power cells. They are indeed the rarest form of ammunition in the wasteland, so be sure to hold on to them. A lot of vaults have their own nefarious experiments going on behind their walls, and Vault 108 is far from different. The ethics of cloning did nothing to stop this vault from getting their hands dirty with some shady technology. A testing subject, Gary, underwent dangerous and risky cloning procedures from inside the Overseer's laboratory. The clones soon became hostile towards all non-clones, and a lot of them ended up being put down. Their vocabulary only consisted of one word, their name, Gary. When interrogated, that's all they would even be able to say. 54 experiments, all of which were failures. It's unclear what happened after the realization that the clones could discriminate between friend and foe. What we do now, however, is that the clones are the only survivors that occupy the vault. During the war, the metro tunnels doubled as a mode of transportation and as an effective shelter from the raids. That didn't stop the radiation from reaching inside the tunnels. Anyone who was foolish enough to journey outside met with fatal radiation poisoning. The people inside the tunnels soon learned of their helplessness, coming to the conclusion that anything above ground was taken hold by a blanket of death. The metro tunnels became the stuff of nightmares after radiation leaked through, mutating all life underground into ferocious predators. If you were lucky, you died from the radiation, and not from one of the super mutants splitting your head open. Earning its name for an obvious reason, 
The Deathclaw Sanctuary is a cave maze with many caverns and intersecting tunnels. Visiting here your first time will likely get you lost. In fact, there are so many overlapping paths that you might even find this area of the wasteland to be an inescapable death sentence. Copious amounts of death claws are on the hunt, as shown by the various rotting corpses of bodies scattered around the maze, some of which look like they have been gnawed on and eaten through. You can find some pretty powerful weapons in here in the maze after going on certain quests, but be aware of the nesting ground you're intruding on. Death claws are stubborn and do not give up their prey very easily. If you've listened to our explanation on the Dunwich Building, you probably already know what goes on in here. Known for its reputation of paranormal activity, this building is found on the very southwestern tip of the map. The building houses a pretty large nest of feral ghouls and ghoul roamers. Lots of players don't even visit the building before arming themselves to the teeth because of how challenging it is to get through. There are nine audio tapes that follow the story of a young explorer, Jamie, in search of his father after he disappeared with a strange book that seemed to hold some sort of demonic power. This very power can be found in the ruins of that building, specifically the bottommost floor you will see a gathering of ghouls worshipping an ominous green obelisk, accompanied with whispering chants of a demonic entity. The vaults underneath the wasteland weren't bothered by the questionable ethics of their experiments, and each overseer seemed to have their own little tests they wanted to run on their subjects. Conned into believing the vaults were reliable living quarters for those that survived the Great War, a lot of them turned out to be testing grounds for guinea pigs. In Vault 106, psychoactive drugs were pumped into the ventilation system, but occupants of the vault were told not to worry because of the low amount. Soon, people started to catch on and plan their escape. The interior ruins of the vault are now filled with only a few survivors. Driven to insanity by the side effects of the fumes still active in the ruins. Even you begin to hallucinate yourself, seeing visions of the tunnel snakes, the first group of adversaries you faced in the game, and even your own father. Prompting a conversation with dad will only make him disappear into thin air. At the end, you'll reach a large dugout area that leads to a mini nuke. This leads you to believe that the inhabitants of the vault were so frightened by their hallucinations that they even resorted to blasting their way out of the vault, no matter the consequences.